Hi, this is Rick for EDU Mobile. Welcome to this course on Rust. This is an introductory course to the Rust programming language. What is Rust? Well, Rust is a systems programming language which is suitable for operating systems, tasks, obviously embedded systems, and performance, any performance critical task. Rust allows low level access to the hardware like C and C++, unlike C and C++ and many other languages that are fairly low level, Rust will prevent many common bugs uh, by promoting safe code. And it does this at compile time. There is no direct memory management in Rust. Well, I take that back. There is. We can declare a raw pointer, but uh, we usually don't have to do that. Rust takes care of memory management for us. We don't have to do the malloc, calloc, and free thing. There's no pointer arithmetic in Rust. All of it happens behind the scenes. The programmer doesn't usually have to worry about anything like that. Rust will allocate memory when it needs to for things, and it will free the memory that it allocates when those things go out of scope. Who uses Rust? Well, if a team is working on low-level code, Rust is a good choice. Rust will capture and emit good error and warning messages. It's fairly bug safe. Uh, tools like Rust FMT, Rust Format, uh, make sure that, that you have a consistent look and feel, a consistent style across the entire team. Uh, bottom line, there's less time chasing down bugs, more time finishing your project. Many companies are producing software using Rust because it is fast, it is reliable, and it's safe. In fact, it's very fast. Uh, those interested in just learning about systems coding, students, uh, hobbyists uh, that want to learn how to write low-level code that is safe and fast should investigate Rust. Anyone, in short, working on code which has to execute rapidly and be highly stable should investigate using Rust. Installing Rust is very easy. We go to this link and we follow the instructions to install Rust using RustUp. If you don't want to do that, you can get the binary and just drop it in your system on Linux and Mac. You can look up all kinds of information uh, looking at the rust-lang.org site. Uh, dependencies. On OS X or Linux, you need to install a linker. You need to have a linker available. You probably already have one on Linux. You probably already have GCC. You can verify that you have GCC, the GNU C compiler, which includes the linker, by using GCC-V and then enter. On OS X, probably the easiest way, uh, you could curl down GCC, of course, but if you just want a programming environment on OS X, there is probably no better choice for a 10-ton hammer for a programming environment on OS X than Xcode. So get it. You will get a C linker with it. On Windows, you need the C++ build tools for Visual C++, and they have to be vision, version 13 or later, and that's available at this link. Search for the build tools on the page using the find function in your browser, and then you can also install the entire community edition of Visual C++ for free if you need an IDE and a compiler and all that stuff. Bottom line, all you really need here is the linker. So what does Rust look like? Well, it looks a lot like C. No surprises there. Uh, here we are declaring a function called main. We're not passing any arguments in the main, but it looks a lot like C. Function, fn, main, curly brace, and then here we print line with a bang. The bang, by the way, denotes a macro. It's not a function, it is a macro. And then we have a string. I'm a little, then we can escape our double quotes inside a string and things like that. Every Rust program must have a main function, and that's its signature, main parents. Functions are declared using the keyword fn. Curly braces are used to group statements. They can be naked, unlike in C. We can just have a set of curly braces, and that will define a scope. Uh, in this case, however, in a function, we are using curly braces to denote the scope of the function. Semicolons are a bit different in Rust, uh, we will get into this a little bit later, but bottom line here, 
A semicolon at the end of an expression suppresses its value. Well, what are you going to learn in this course? Well, we're not going to delve into all of those things that are easy to find online. What we're going to do is look at the core of the language. And that means looking at the syntax, the data types, and the variable things that we can do, control structures, functions, data structures, and traits. And that's the core of the language. There are things like closures and concurrency that are really cool, but we won't have time to look at those. And you can look at the Rust documentation and get that stuff for yourself. The course does assume some experience with the programming language, but doesn't assume that you're an expert. Uh, if you have some knowledge of C, uh, C++, that kind of syntax, uh, the sort of syntax that is commonly found in Java, for example, a C-like language, you'll probably feel right at home with most stuff in Rust. We'll be looking at Rust from a very high level. Uh, more information always is available uh, online, and that rust-lang.org site is a great starting point for further study as you continue to learn the Rust programming language. Thank you very much.